Hello and welcome to Newsfeed, your daily dose of what people are talking about online, from news stories to what's trending. And today we kick off the show with scathing criticism of Elon Musk's shambolic takeover of Twitter. He's just acting in a way that I think makes everyone alarmed. And I think, you know, ultimately it comes down to this. I think we will look back on this era. It's almost like the era of Greek mythology. The idea that we wake up every day waiting to see what the Greek gods, the billionaires have decided for us is clearly anti-democratic. Well, that was Bruce Daisley, a former Twitter vice president, voicing his concerns about the undemocratic changes at the company. Now, it's been under two weeks since the Tesla CEO acquired Twitter. And since then, it's been pretty crazy out there. Daisley thinks Musk has underestimated the complexity of his restructuring plans and seems pretty clueless about what he's doing. In response to someone on the platform, Daisley described the billionaire's Twitter as the Brexit of social media. And while it was everyone's fault, Musk was the sole architect of all the chaos. The former executive's criticism comes after Musk laid off about half of the company's staff. Musk said he had no choice as Twitter was losing over $4 million a day. Daisley says job cuts can happen anywhere, but the problem is the manner in which people are being let go. He says the Tesla boss might be the richest guy in the world, but he behaved like he was going broke. Even just from a very cynical point of view, I don't think this was very well organized or coordinated or well informed as to what the laws are and what was um, allowed. This is a highly unusual way to go about a layoff, particularly in Silicon Valley. Often in Silicon Valley, a lot of the tech companies won't want to make these as public and are much more afraid of negative PR than in this situation. But wait, in an embarrassing U-turn, Twitter is now pleading with some of the staff who were laid off to come back. Just 24 hours after receiving their notices, the tech giant reached out to some ex-employees. And after realizing their experience is needed to build the many new features Elon Musk plans to roll out, the request asking for employees to return showed just how rushed and chaotic the layoffs were. And also it appears Twitter was rather flippant and insensitive about how it carried out the mass layoffs too. I was fired over email. So here's the email that Hannah sent me. As you can see, uh, she just tells me that my email access is going away at 6 p.m. today and then attaches a meme of Elon saying, time to leave the nest, you're fired. Yep, fired with a meme. And adding to Twitter's upheaval and revenue drop, several major advertisers have pulled out of the company due to content moderation concerns. And those who have not left yet are under increasing pressure from activist groups to do so. At an investors' conference in New York, Elon Musk called it an attack on the First Amendment. I think if, if activist groups can pressure uh, advertisers upon which Twitter is fundamentally dependent, um, to you know, su suppress free speech, then that doesn't seem right. So Musk is looking for ways to diversify Twitter's income. One way is by making the process of getting a blue tick much easier. The highly desired blue tick was previously only available to high profile or influential figures and organizations on the platform who verified their identity. It has been used as a sign to prove the authenticity of a profile and identify reliable information. Now, Twitter says anyone who is willing to pay $8 a month can get one. While many celebrated this decision, the policy change is proving controversial as celebrities, government figures, and brands can easily be impersonated. If you haven't been on Twitter yet, it's hilarious, but sort of also like in a doomsday way. There are dozens of accounts right now that are parodying Elon Musk. Some of them are making jokes about Elon Musk stepping down as CEO of Twitter. Others are making fun of his personal life. It's clearly annoying the real Elon Musk to the point where he put out this tweet saying that Twitter handles that are impersonating other accounts that don't say that they're a parody account will be permanently suspended. Poor Kathy Griffin, they already restricted her account. 
The lesson here is that there's real value in identity verification online, especially when misinformation is so rampant on the internet. Buying verification can cause a whole host of problems that are more severe than just people pretending to be Elon Musk online. While those who chose to stay on Twitter were having fun by impersonating Musk, other users have been seeking alternative platforms. One of the biggest beneficiaries has been Mastodon. Just last week, it gained over 230,000 new users. Well, on paper, the network looks Kind of like Twitter, where users can write posts, like, or repost and reply to and follow each other, but it works in a very, very different way that's caused major confusion online. Let's see how it all works. Mastodon is a federated network, so it's decentralized in that there are many different servers that have different names. So you have Mastodon Social, which is the big one. You have an HCI.social. You have some sort of sports ball network. You probably have a FOSS network. There's a bunch of different ones and anyone can set up their own server. Then people join those servers. So they're primarily interchanging or interacting with one server, but all the servers are also in the federated network. So that means even if I join the server over here, I can still see the posts from someone on the server over here, and I can see the posts from someone on the server over here because the federated network is sharing information between all of these servers. In a federated system, there is no central authority with central ownership, meaning no tech oligarch can go in and take control over the whole thing. Each individual server is run by its own people, corporations, organizations, whatever, and they are independently owned and controlled, and they are then added to the federated network. That also means if one of the servers goes down for some reason, the rest of the network stays intact. So the risk of the entire network going down is very low. Americans go to the polls on Tuesday for midterm elections. And the Blues and Reds are battling it out, both on the campaign trail and online. Though not everyone is playing fair and misinformation is proving to be a massive problem. Conspiracy theories are rampant. Top of the list is the claim that the 2020 election was stolen from former President Donald Trump. Believers of this fake news think this election might go the same way. Some are taking extreme measures. In Arizona, armed men and women, some wearing bulletproof vests, have showed up at early voting stations, claiming that they are watching over ballot boxes. Civil rights groups and the U.S. Justice Department found this very concerning, and there are fears minority voters could be intimidated or even stay away from the ballot box. Last month's attack on Paul Pelosi, the husband of House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, has also been used to spread misinformation. The attacker's social media footprint showed he had been sharing a lot of far-right conspiracy theories. And in the aftermath, conspiracy theorists claimed that it was an inside job or a lover's quarrel found traction on social media, painting a wholly different picture to what actually happened. The New York Times reports that some of the misinformation was being spread by prominent Republicans. The media outlet even released this list of 21 prominent Republicans, along with their outlandish claims. And Bloomberg says Republicans can get a boost on their social media pages by sharing false claims about the so-called stolen election. But it's not just the Republicans who are peddling misinformation and lies. An Axios investigation in October revealed a network of websites which mimic local news outlets but only churn out Democrat-friendly content. Some of them also massage facts and figures to put the party in a better light. The problem is that Democratic candidates are using these false stats in their campaigns. On the social media side of things, big tech companies say they are working to counter the misinformation and disinformation campaigns. For Twitter, the timing could not have been worse with its recent mass layoffs. Twitter's head of safety and integrity, Yoel Roth, tries to address that, saying efforts on election integrity remain a top priority. And Meta, the owner of Facebook and Instagram, says it invested heavily into election security and is applying lessons learned from past elections. YouTube, in a recent study by watchdog group Global Witness, was found to be effective in blocking misleading political ads, while TikTok failed to catch 90% of false ads. Um, social media, it, it, it kind of runs on engagement, and people know how to, who are placing these ads, know how to 
kind of create uh, emotional content that really gets people, you know, angry, scared, et cetera. And when you receive that kind of information, then, you know, your impulse is to uh, share it broadly and be outraged, et cetera. So it's really a problem for all of us. Planning to buy an iPhone for Christmas. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but it may not arrive in time. After months of Apple trying to convince everyone that everything is fine and that its supply chain hasn't been affected by pandemic lockdowns in China, the tech giant has been forced to once again shut down most operations at its biggest iPhone factory. Chinese officials have locked down the district, which houses Foxconn's iPhone factory in Zhengzhou province. iPhone production is now at a significantly reduced capacity. Apple warns that the production woes mean that customers will face longer wait times in receiving new iPhones. The supply chain issues lay bare the risks in Apple concentrating its manufacturing supply chain in China. Its reliance on China has become a liability amid the country's strict zero COVID-19 policy. Mid last month, Apple had to shut down its primary plant there as virus cases spiked. Workers were seen fleeing before Foxconn closed the facility to the outside world effectively shutting in 200,000 workers. Those of you trying to get an iPhone right now, you might want to listen to this. This is all part of China's very strict zero COVID policy. And because this entire city is under lockdown, they're not allowed to ride to public transportation. So these people are walking thousands and thousands of miles back home. People living in these factories dormitories were freaking out once the facility completely shut off from the world when COVID cases started popping up inside the factory. So more than 200,000 of these workers were stuck in the situation and they were forced to keep working. People said that they were given inadequate food and no medicine. This factory alone manufactures roughly half of Apple's iPhones. So now Foxconn is saying that this might hurt their ability to ship iPhones. The UN's COP27 climate change conference kicked off on Sunday, and the conversation and controversies there are not only about the climate. Delegates were informed that there was an official app that they could download to stay informed. When you enter the app, it asks for access to users' location, photos, and emails. Many are now worried about surveillance. There are more than 25,000 people at the event, including heads of state, diplomats, journalists, and activists from around the world. And the app has already been downloaded over 5,000 times. Cybersecurity experts say the biggest red flag is the number of permissions required, which is unnecessary for the simple operation of the app. There are concerns the data could be used by the Egyptian government to further crack down on critics. Meanwhile, climate activists from around the world have come up with creative ways to protest. No, not in museums with soup. This one was more effective. In Amsterdam, hundreds of protesters went to Schiphol Airport and prevented private jets from taking off. Some of them sat around the jets and others rode bicycles around the planes. They played instruments, shouted and screamed their messages. A Greenpeace spokesperson said the group was trying to encourage fewer flights and use more environment-friendly options of transportation. Many of the activists were arrested for being in a prohibited area. Vulnerable nations like India want the world's richer countries to put their money where their mouth is and finance climate action. The capital, New Delhi, is currently enveloped in thick smog and residents are struggling to breathe. Smita Sharma shares her experience. I have been living in India's national capital, the adjoining national capital region of Delhi, for more than two decades now. Unfortunately, come November and this entire area turns into a severe gas chamber, the intensity has been increasing over the past four to five years. Now, after three straight days of the air quality index or the AQI being recorded at a severe category level, on Monday, this came down to a very poor category. The levels though are still very, very damaging. If you were to check your weather app, you would see the AQI still hovering above a 350. Now, the last few days, several measures were put in place. Primary schools had to be shut down. The entry of commercial vehicles were banned. But what is a constant is the smog that wraps up the city, the historical monuments that can barely be visible in their full glory, people suffering from cold and cough, watering eyes, that taste of lingering sulfur in your mouth.
On Sunday, New Yorkers ran the city's annual marathon covering five boroughs. Starting in Staten Island, moving to Brooklyn, Queens, the Bronx, and ending in Manhattan. And as usual, some runners took this opportunity to have some fun. A man ran with a pineapple on his head, and someone held up a power box for runners to pretend as if they're in a video game. Many took their pets to enjoy the occasion, and the ones who didn't run came up with funny signs to amuse onlookers. And that takes us to the finishing line of another news feed. Find this show on YouTube and do subscribe to our channel. See you same time tomorrow.